Good evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Booth. Um, first, I want to give all glory to God, uh, for that's what Dave would want us to definitely give all the credit to. Um, but what a joy to look around this room and to see how many people God touched through the life of Dave Duda. So thank you for being here. Um, Mark, I did not get instructions from Dave, um, but I know Dave, and we'll get to that part at the end. Okay, so hang on with me. Um, Amanda asked me to speak uh, today, um, and I thought right away I'd be honored. But am I worthy? Um, no, I'm not. There's many of you that should be up here speaking, um, but I'm going to try to do my best to honor God and Dave and, uh, and support the man that I call Dude I Love um, in three areas, family, friendship, faith. So family first. Um, and I was told I have five to 10 minutes, but that's not gonna happen. So just get comfortable. All right, um, Amanda, Dave loved you so much as his bride. He talked often about doing date nights with you or planning some kind of a surprise for you. Um, some were good surprises, some were interesting, I'll just say that. I tried to guide them, I tried. Um, some, some of my favorite moments uh, is Dave getting all excited about something that you could just see him just starting to just drift and float and just get so excited. And then Amanda would say, David? And that was all she had to say. And then Dave, Dave would not give up, he would change a little bit and, and slightly change it, and she would shake her head, smile, roll her eyes, and laugh, as I'm sure you're doing right now at me, all right? Um, but you've been an incredible supporter to your husband, um, and you, he's gone through many health trials, but in the last year, you've been his rock. Um, you are loved, and God is so proud of you. Well done. Um, Elijah, Caleb, Lily, your dad loved you guys all so much. Um, he was so proud of each of you. He loved spending time with, with you, making up m wonderful memories, um, going to Six Flags, um, games, Brewer games, Bucks games, as we saw in the pictures. But one of the greatest moments, Elijah, was when you accepted Christ into your heart and were baptized. Your dad just beamed talking about you. Um, and we will be praying for Caleb and, and Lily to have the same relationship with Christ. But your dad loved you guys very much. Uh, Dean and Marilyn, um, Dave often shared with me his love of going to your house, especially when Amanda was busy at night um, and could come over and enjoy a meal with you guys. But you guys meant everything to him. He was so proud to know that you'd go to Bible study with him. He talked about that with me all the time. Um, and it was a genuine love. You know, we don't get to choose our family but God does, um, and God was blessed to have you as parents. Um, Jill and Jamie, um, he loved you guys so much as sisters. He would tell me oftentimes the times of spending time with you guys, talking with you, going to uh, Eagle River, um, and there's something special about a sibling relationship. Again, God shows this, and you have laughs, you have tears, you have long talks, you have secrets, um, but it's something special with siblings. And Marcus and Michael, um, I just want to say thank you for loving Dave as your own brother. Um, he loved you guys, and he was so proud of you. He would talk about you guys all the time to his friends, especially me. Um, and, and it just means a lot. So I just want to say um, he loved his family very much. Friendship. It's an honor to speak about him as my friend, but most importantly as my brother in Christ. You probably don't know this, but I'll share it with some of you, uh, or all of you. Dave and I met when I was 15 years old, and Dave was 18. Uh, Dave was throwing a get-together, and uh, I ended up grounded for a month after I got home. Uh, I really can't explain the details because my parents are here, and so are Dean and Marilyn, but um, let's just say Do Dave knew how to be a fun guy even early in life, um, but he loved the Packers, he loved going to Eagle River. He loved his whole family. He loved playing basketball. And he loved Disney. I moved away for about eight years, uh, went to college, lived in Los Angeles. Never thought our paths would ever cross again. But they did. 
in the summer of 2004. I was working late one night. Uh, my dad and I worked together. And my dad invited me to a baptism on a Tuesday night. And I told him that, you know, Dad, a baptism is a real personal thing. And I don't think I need to be there. I don't want to make it awkward for anybody. After several minutes, my dad convinced me to go. When we arrived at the Stagers, I walked up to the pond to what looked to be a scene out of the Bible. A large group of people standing on a grassy area watching men and women be baptized in a large body of water. I couldn't believe it when I saw the Dudoff family in the water waiting to be baptized. And there was Dave with his parents and sister Jamie. God loves to show everyone that he's in control and his timing is perfect. The baptism became very personal to me. And afterwards, that is where Dave introduced me to his amazing wife, Amanda, who offered to meet my wife, who she had never met before, and only knew a few people and were seen. And years later, now Dave, Amanda, and I have shared so many memories together. To share a few of them with you, one of them is us all going to church together at Harvest Bible Chapel on Saturday nights in Rolling Meadows. The announcement that they were going to be doing a Harvest Bible plant up in Wisconsin, as we were at the same service, texting each other, not knowing we were both there, praying in your house, uh, in your living room, for God to use our families in Wisconsin. In that same living room, praying on January 11th at night for God to be in control for Lily and for him to give you her. The next day, we got the wonderful news that God provided that gift. Going to Brewers games. There's a story here. We were, at, we were the last people to live, leave Miller Park one night because Dave lost his car keys. <laughs> we looked for those darn car keys for about an hour, could not find them. Literally, the people made us leave or the police were going to come and escort us out. His car was the only one out there. And as we're walking to the one car in the parking lot, Lori says, do you guys hear music? Yeah. And she goes, is your car running? Dave's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Four hours. The car was running in the parking lot. I don't know how many people took that thing for a joyride. But I appreciate that they returned it. And Duda, Duda Love just acted like it was no big deal. Like, apparently it happens all the time. Going to Six Flags and Gurney, and then last year, we went to St. Louis. Being at the airport when Elijah came home, and seeing Dave have so much joy and pride, along with the rest of the family and friends there, but as he is a father. Being in the courtroom when Caleb was officially declared a Duda. Watching their dog, Dixie, attack my wife, because they, because they named one of their toys Lori. So when we came over, Anytime we said the name Lori, she would attack her. <laughs> I think there was a picture involved too, but I don't know. It was pretty funny. Um, and for all you don't know, my wife is not a dog person. So, all right. Um, men's breakfast, Bible studies, serving with Dave in um, Harvest Bible Chapel or Harvest Community Youth, both of them. Uh, Dave would always come up to me and say, Patrick, I got an idea. Let's be spiritual rappers. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. He's like, all right, I'll rap, you dance. And I'm like, no, wait, maybe, let's do this, okay. Um, no, the kids would be scarred, so no, we didn't do that. Um, the Milwaukee Zoo, how many times did Dave love going to the Milwaukee Zoo uh, with his family and friends and invite us? Um, calls, texts, cookouts, and the last, Packer football. As a Bears fan, Hang on, everyone has grace. <laughs> Dave would enjoy this moment of teasing me. So for this, and only for Dave, I will say go Pack Go. <laughs> so now we're on to faith. Everyone still awake? Okay, good, okay. One of Dave's greatest gifts as a friend was encouraging texts filled with scripture. On June 21st, 2016, at 9.43 a.m., I still have this text. Dave texted me, Patrick, Colossians 3.17 says, 
And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Praying for you today to be a huge light of Christ today, brother. Love you, man. I texted back, thanks, man. How are you? <laughs> Dave responded, great. Trying to live for Jesus today. I came back with a less mature answer, uh, saying the devil's trying to turn up the heat on me and make me sweat. Dave said, that sounds like a name for a hot sauce. That's exactly what I loved about Dave. He never hit me over the head with a hammer. He loved me as a brother and knew I needed God's grace. He loved me and accepted me for being a guy that needed a lot of God's help. Dave was a very gifted man with his mind that he used at the city of Cudahy to help this city be even better, more beautiful. However, it wasn't Dave's heart that really showed the amazing man that gift, gift, uh, God gifted to us. It was his heart and love for the Lord his savior, Jesus Christ. That's who Dave Duda was. That was how Dave really changed the world because he used opportunity after opportunity to share the truth and that only those who confess their sin and ask Jesus Christ as the Lord and savior into their hearts and then and only then will they be forgiven from all sin and accepted into God's chosen kingdom. Dave's attitude inspired me. He always found a way to look for positive outlook or God's plan. This is an area that I, I'm not like Dave, but he always encouraged me to be more like him. As many of you know, Dave had battled several things in the years with his health, and I would often ask him how he was doing, and he would say this phrase, praise Jesus, I'm doing good. And then later I'd find out he had been battling some major health problems that week, but he never complained. The one that really stood out for me was Dave being able to taste metal in his mouth for the last couple years. And when I asked him about it, again, no surprise here. Praise Jesus, now I'll be able to lose the weight that I want to because the food tastes like metal. God knew I needed the help. So praise God that it's in his hands, not mine. Who says that? <laughs> I know, Dave Duda. Dave's passion for his family was another area that touched me. Dave loved going to any place with his family. It might have been out to eat or to a movie or to Six Flags or Disney, but Dave made each one feel like it was the best place ever because he was with his family. Lastly, I truly believe Dave was put into our lives for a specific reason and purpose. I truly believe the reason was for God to show you and I his love for you. Dave often would say, I pray Jesus comes back today and we all go to heaven together. And I know right now, Dave's hands are raised high and his head is bowed because he is worshiping his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dave was not a perfect man, but his passion and commitment for Jesus was an example to us all. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So here's the final point. To honor Dave and truly represent him, I'm gonna ask you the following questions. Have you made the most important decision of your life? Have you confessed that you are a sinner and that the only way, again, the only way you can be forgiven is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You can't buy it, sell, or work your way into heaven. The only way is to accept that Jesus Christ, God's one and only son, gave up his throne in heaven to come to earth, to follow his commands, show God's love through teachings and miracles, and then willingly allowed himself to be tortured and crucified so he could be the ultimate sacrifice for all sins. For you to live in heaven for eternity. That is why we say the name Jesus is above all names. Jesus is Dave's king. He's my king. He's your king. Don't wait one more day. Give your heart completely to God and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's what Dave wanted us all to do. Use every day that God has given you as a gift to share the truth with everyone that God puts in your life. 
Dave used his life to glorify God. Let's all leave today ready to be more like Dave Duda. Thank you.